I think community-based experiences or group experiences um, will be kind of a crucial way forward so that you will always have a group of people who have at least, who have at least shared the experience with you and that you can kind of check in with. Um, I mean, and on Siledep too, because of COVID-19, uh, we couldn't do the face-to-face -face integration groups. So for the people who'd had a high dose experience, we set up a monthly Zoom, not oh no, a weekly Zoom meeting. And it was incredible to watch, um, watch everybody support each other and see them grow together. Just having that contact, you could just see how incredibly important that connection and contact, having a space to talk about that experience and, and you know, people who understood depression. So in the end it felt like you know we could sit back as facilitators and, and just watch them support each other and, and grow together and I think that kind of model is ideally how how it should be rolled out I don't know how we do that I suppose it's just it's just more acceptance or more community-based um, um, versions of it but 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 to me it feels like that's the, another level of, of how we can embed um, the psychedelic experience in communities um, and it, just seeing that in that, that zoom group was really amazing because I suppose in the integration group it was a mixture of participants and just other, other people and they weren't necessarily depressed but because all these people had this very shared experience they'd all been on the trial they, they were yeah it was just uh, a wonder to behold how they all supported each other so I think that feels like a really important learning. I mean, COVID-19 gave us, gave us that, but I think that that would be really helpful thing to do, to continue with, um, with trial, you know, future trials. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful point about the kind of group, group work. Like mm. I, I personally can imagine over the kind of coming years and decades, if everything goes kind of optimally, that it may be, we may have to kind of re-envision how we deliver kind of healing to people. And, and, mm -hmm. and instead of it yeah. being a, a, a case of delivering healing, maybe we do have community centers where, you know, yeah. you imagine using these things for personal growth and healing, you know, so someone who maybe isn't at high risk of, you know, um, mm -hmm. when, instead of talking about someone with like severe treatment resistant depression, who may be, have suicidality or something, if you're just someone who's st struggling with mundane kind of emotional issues and unhappiness i can imagine there being a place for yeah kind of very um i guess non-hierarchical kind of group-based uh experiences and and support and integration circles uh for, for people to be able to access this stuff can you imagine some something like that kind of, yeah well i think yeah. yeah that that would be um, well, I suppose maybe how I've thought about it is that, you know, um, thinking about a depressed um, participant or um, patient group is that initially maybe they would start off with individual sessions and then they would graduate to group sessions. You know, part mm. of their journey might be a few individual sessions and then moving to the group because that, you know, that in itself creates deeper connection. So, um, yeah. and of course it's more cost effective. Um, and yeah, and I, I really like the idea of um, the, it being within a community. In fact, you know, growing your own mushrooms and people going, you know, having their sabbaticals and, and like figuring stuff out and having that space to do that, um, whether they're or, or yeah, struggling with, me with deeper mental health issues. But it's just, yeah, it's fine putting those structures in place in, in a safe way, I suppose. Right. But it does I mean, feel that's... that the group will be an important um, development or addition to, to the model. Yeah, yeah, I think that's um, a really uh, perhaps exciting and, and striking thing of, of psilocybin as a as such a powerful medicine for these things is, is as you say, it's incredibly cost effective. If you had, you know, it's a it's a, a I guess a, a naturally occurring you know organism that don't, can't be patented, so if you know this doesn't have to be um a mental health care model where you have to have psychiatrists you know being involved giving heavy like top-down instructions you know as you say the experience itself tends to kind of have its own logic and unfold from within and so it seems kind of fortunate that this potentially revolutionary way of of, of treating people could be very widely accessible in terms of you know that they're not being kind of huge financial barriers to to rolling out the, that kind of community healing model I think mm. mm -hmm. yeah I think yeah, yeah it would would take a while and we yeah. we may have to go through um a sort of medical model version of it before hopefully it transforms or transmutes into it to one and I think even um 
yeah i yeah i think with healthy participants maybe it's not so crucial that it's a psychiatrist or a therapist i'm not sure but um with people who are really struggling with mental health right. issues i think it's really important to have you know a therapist or someone with mental health training um even though they're doing little it's just being conscious of you know the warning signs of being able to manage people who really struggle um of psychologically course, yeah. uh, and, and i suppose there's that training isn't there that that um so even though you yeah that training and the um security i suppose that it it, it can offer um people people really struggle 